Good morning again, and thank you for joining our webinar on Exploring Career Pathways. This has been a much requested webinar topic, so I'm excited to have some incredible panelists with me to, um, today to discuss this subject matter. I am Yoruba Butler, and I serve as the Strategy Director for Post-Secondary Access at Alabama Possible. We'd like to recognize and thank our sponsors for supporting this work and making this webinar possible. Without their support, Alabama Possible would not be able to provide the assistance that we do without a participation fee. Alabama Goes to College campaign works closely with several partners to implement the initiatives that we're going to discuss today. Thank you to our great partners, the Alabama Commission on Higher Education, Alabama Community College, Alabama State Department of Education, and Get Educated, the Common Black College app that helps promote applying and enrolling at 65 historically Black colleges and universities. A few ha housekeeping notes before we get started. Please keep your microphones on mute at all times to avoid any feedback during the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and posted to YouTube forward slash Alabama Possible. You can submit your questions throughout the webinar using the chat feature. Please, please always select everyone when typing your question or comment into the chat. This way, everyone is able to see your question and we can reduce the number of duplicate questions that are being asked. We will collect the questions throughout the webinar and will attempt to answer them during our Q&A section. Lastly, we have polls that are going to be uh, used throughout the webinar, which are designed to get real-time feedback. If you are a high school educator, you will need to participate in all of the poll questions at the end of the presentation to receive your professional development credit. So please stay all the way to the end. When posting on social media, we encourage you to tag us at AL Goes to College. We love to see the work that you're doing with high school seniors around career exploration and preparation. As a reminder, we are still encouraging high schools to register for Alabama Goes to College at Alabama Possible forward slash register hyphen 2324. By signing up, educators can receive support from us in the form of weekly informational newsletters, direct assistance through our help desk, and professional development webinars such as this. If you're new to the Alabama Goes to College campaign, this is a statewide effort that works to ensure every student can plan for, pursue, and complete valuable post-secondary credentials. There are three components to the Alabama Goes to College campaign. All of them aim to support students to and through post-secondary journeys and into their careers. And just in case you all are not aware, November is National Scholarship Month. Please continue to review our news newsletters in detail. Our goal is to provide you with as many resources as possible to share with your students. If you happen to know of a scholarship that you would like to have shared, feel free to send it to us and we will include it in our newsletters this month. So to get started on our conversation about career pathways, let's take a moment to review part of the Alabama career development model, which was introduced by the State Department of Education on, in October of 2022. This model provides targets by grade level as early as elementary school, as well as suggested instructional strategies to meet those targets. I thought today we would ground today's conversation in targets for grades 11 and 12. You can access the targets and the strategies at the link provided in these slides. The presentation will be sent to you in our follow-up email. 
So the first target is to is continue to engage students and parents in the 16 career um, clusters. Target two, can continue to build career pathways through academic, su academic subject matter and leadership experiences. The third target is continue to build knowledge and careers, education and employment opportunities. Target four, engage students and families in out of school activities to support career preparation. The fifth target is update and utilize career planning assessments to finalize post-graduation plans. And target six, assist students in course planning and continuing to acquire knowledge about careers, education, and employment opportunities. And the last target, target seven, is final review and updates to the personal education plan of study to meet the student's current career and educational goals and interests. So let's look at our first poll question. And it's so this, so looking at the model, think about each of these targets and which target do you currently employ the most strategies? May, will you please deploy the poll question and let us know the results? Yeah, so we have that launched now. If you'll take a few moments, I know that each target is a little bit lengthy, so take your time reading through and just think about which of these targets you're currently employing the most strategies around. Okay, so the most common responses um, with around 50% is continue to build knowledge about careers, education, and employment opportunities. And then coming in second, we have assist students in course planning and continuing to acquire knowledge about careers, education, and employment opportunities. So it sounds like everyone is working towards similar targets. And we're hoping today that you'll be able to be supported through all of these targets with your 11th and 12th graders. So I'm going to go ahead and end that poll now. Thank you so much. And then carrying on, just wanted to provide more context for today's webinar. So I'm going to highlight some data for us. So we're talking a lot about the many different avenues that students can take to pursue their career interests. And because of that, we want to just talk about some of the data around education and training that might serve as stepping stones into these different careers of interest. So what you see on the screen is an update on the progress of the Success Plus plan, which many of you know is the governor's goal of adding 500,000 newly credentialed and highly skilled workers to the workforce by 2025. So a report that was released in June of 2022 documents our progress towards that goal. And the positive news from that report is that by 2021, we were just under halfway towards reaching the goal. So we added 214,725 newly credentialed people to the workforce from 2018 to 2021. And then what we're highlighting on the screen here is a subpopulation. So really want to focus on Alabamians ages 16 to 24, since most of you on the webinar today are working with high school seniors or maybe younger college students who fall into that subpopulation. So of um, that subpopulation, we had 137,848 newly credentialed people. And that includes 89,413 associate or bachelor's degrees, 29,748 industry certifications, 17,926 certificates, 419 professional licenses, 342 apprenticeships. If you've already checked your inbox this morning, you probably saw a, a newsletter go out from us that is highlighting apprenticeships. So just knowing that that is one path that students can take as they're pursuing their career interests 
So we really just want to not necessarily focus on credentials today, but highlight the many different pathways that students can take as they are pursuing the career of their dreams. So I'm now going to turn it back on over to Yoruba. All right. Thank you so much, May. So let's go ahead and get started on our panel discussion. I will allow each of our panelists to introduce themselves with their name, title, organization, and brief description of their work. Sylvia, will you get us started? Hi, my name is Sylvia Petway. I am a success coach here at Jefferson State Community College in Birmingham, Alabama. And I work with high schools to um, help students create a plan and connect them to the programs and services that we have here at Jeff State so that they can be college and career ready upon graduation from high school. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. And Pat, would you give us an introduction? Yes, ma'am. Um, I am Pat Coyne. I teach TV production, signature, a TV production signature academy here in Jefferson County Schools at Hueytown High School. Uh, I am uh, in my seventh year of teaching, second year of doing the signature academy, and one of only two TV production signature, or excuse me, TV production programs uh, here in Jefferson County. And I'm very fortunate to have wonderful students and really, really enjoy getting up and coming to work every day. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And our third panelist is Philip Brown. Mr. Brown, would you? Good morning. Good morning. I am Philip Brown. I'm the automotive instructor for um, the Shades Valley Technical Academies. Uh, this is my 22nd year as an automotive instructor and working with the Signature Academies for the last five years here at Shades Valley or the uh, Shades Valley Technical Academy or the DAB Center. It's a uh, it's, it's a uh, technical education center uh, that's off campus from Shades Valley. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, so I appreciate all of our panelists for being here and we're gonna begin our question and answer session. Now, each of our panelists have questions, but if there is some insight that any of the three of you want to share with a specific question that has not been asked of you directly, please feel free to jump in. We encourage, we encourage cross conversation. So our question is for Pat. How do you assist seniors with steps in researching or exploring career pathways? Um, a lot of what I do is I'm very fortunate where obviously I teach TV production is a love of mine, but my philosophy is I may have a student who is the world's best, say, editor or photographer, but if he or she does not have the life skills, the social skills, the employability skills to to get your foot in the door, if you will, he or she may never see how good they are at their talent. Um, mm -hmm. So. I just, I, I focus a lot on employability skills. Obviously, I want all my students to enjoy TV production. Obviously, it's a passion of mine. But if they can't look at, don't know how to look at someone in the eye, work on problem solving, teamwork, communication, carry on a conversation, then again, we may just never know how good they are at TV production or at any kind of behind the scenes work. So, Incorporating that, I do a lot, obviously, as I'm sure Philip would agree, we do a lot of hands-on work uh, in the academy, in, in my program. And as we are doing that, I encourage my students to work together, teamwork, to communicate to each other, to listen to each other. I do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer interaction where I may say, hey, student X, show student Y how to do this. Or, you know, because I, I feel like they learn better from each other. And if I can... If I can facilitate an opportunity for these students to give them as close to real world examples, then I believe that they can either see if they like it or they don't. And, you know, maybe my program is not for them. And that's OK. That's OK. But they're going to try in here. They're going to have fun. They're going to give me 100 uh, percent every time they come in here. And if it's not for them, no problem. No problem. But all the while, they are going to learn employability skills, teamwork, problem solving, communication. Uh, multitasking and which will help them across the board in TV production or in 
just life. And uh, I somewhat jokingly, but <laughs> unfortunately, truthfully, tell my students that the bar for them is so incredibly low, so incredibly low with this generation that if they just do a little bit more, write a thank you note, care, just say hello to someone as you go by, as you go by his or her door, a teacher, or make eye contact. And my gosh, you're going to be way up here. You're going to you're going to stand out so much. So I guess in a very very long-winded answer, uh, Ms. Butler, I, I think I just, the employability skills are the root of all I teach. And if I can use that while teaching some TV production, then hopefully they will excel at both. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, our next question is for Sylvia. As a success coach, what do you see on the collegiate level regarding the need for career exploration while concurrently pursuing a post-secondary education? Um, well, one of the things that I've noticed uh, working in higher education as it pertains to career exploration is that a lot of students don't really take advantage of the career services until it's time to graduate from college. And I've learned that it's important for us as uh, employees of higher education and instructors who work in higher education to collaborate and find ways to integrate career exploration services throughout their coursework. Um, one way that we've done that um, is that we have students who, like let's say for example, they're in an English course. Um, their English instructor may have them to do like a resume writing assignment. And they can bring that resume, maybe a part of that assignment is to bring that resume to our career coaches and our career centers so that they can review the resumes and bring it back to the students. And not only do the students get a grade, but they also have an updated resume. They see what they need to work on when it comes to their resume. Um, so it kind of, again, integrates those career skills with their academic skills instead of them waiting to the last minute to say, oh, it's time for me to graduate. I need to look for jobs. So let me go ahead and turn this resume in real quick. They'll be more prepared as they approach graduation. So I, I definitely think um, integrating um, career exploration services throughout coursework is important. And I also think that um, instructors who may feel like they don't have the, the bandwidth or the time to do that can utilize the campus services that are on campus. Like let's say, for example, a, a an instructor needs to do a day where they need a grade. Maybe that grading day could be the day where they send the students to the career center so the students can get assistance with like mock interviews, uh, resume writing, those soft skills that uh, Mr. Pat mentioned, you know, working on those throughout that class period. Again, that could help integrate those career skills through their academic um, journey. And that way, when they are ready to graduate, they'll feel that much more prepared to go out into the workforce and have what the resources they need to feel confident in doing so. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so our next question is for Philip. Um, what strategies do you use for supporting career exploration and preparation with your students? Uh, I am. Uh... <clears throat> You know, we we live in a in twenty first century in a an extremely technical society. Our students are real tech savvy, and however, what I've discovered is that most of the time, when it comes to online participation, they're more interested in in entertainment than they are actually about education and and develop self development. So, uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, different online things that you can do and. You know, our school for a long time, they promoted a program called Cooter and, and then you can find other things like that. But I, we discovered, I discovered early on, those kids aren't, are the, aren't in the least bit interested in that. And they generally just uh, waste their time. And if they answer the questions on it, they're, they're, they're not serious. And, and so it really doesn't give you a good barometer of, of what they're really interested in. Sometimes it, it can be effective. However, what I have discovered and and because I, I teach the TDL program, which is uh, transportation, distribution, logistics, which automotive fits into, um, and that has a, a power school and a Schoology has a really good TDL program, and I've taught that class uh, several times, which gets into all the different careers that are in this pathway, 
But what I found to be more effective than anything else, due to the fact that I teach in, in the automotive field, is that I schedule a lot of, I try to schedule a lot of field trips um, to get them out there and put them actually in a shop. We, when I first came to Shades Valley, I taught for 17 years at Minor High School, oh, Pat, over there in your neck of the woods. But uh, uh, so when I came to Shades Valley, um, we, uh, we, we, got, we were able to sign a contract with Mercedes Benz, which is, if you know anything about where our school is located, we're right across the street from Mercedes Benz Iron Deal dealership. And uh, they allowed us to have access to their training uh, uh, information and program basis. And what we started doing is every time we would have a field trip, we would actually take them after we do whatever activity we're doing in the morning time, whether it's the car show or, or uh, going and touring a uh, Honda or Mercedes Benz or even Hyundai in Montgomery, uh, we would come back and in the afternoon, we would take them to a shop and let them walk around the shop and actually see uh, what it looks like to actually be a technician in a actual facility. And that, that has inspired more of our students to, to be more interested. I've introduced those kids sometimes to, to the online program with Mercedes Benz or, or, or with Ford or Honda. We've got agreements with all of those. And, and, and you'll say, okay, here's some online courses. You start taking these courses and that'll get you down the path toward getting a job. And six months later, or six weeks later, whatever length of time, they haven't even cracked it open and looked at it. But the moment you take them out there on that show floor and you let them see what the facility looks like and you let them hear one of the mechanics, which incidentally just happens to be a former student of mine, say, oh, I'm making X amount of dollars. And all of a sudden it, it changes their whole environment. Uh, the, these kids, these kids got to see it real because sometimes it's just a challenge to even get them to believe they're actually going to need a job one day. Uh, by, piggyback on what Mr. Brown said, it's that with TV production, my, much of the way his students are see the shop, my students see themselves on TV or see the ones that are just scared to death to be on camera. If they can see something they produce, oh, hey, I was behind the camera on that. Look at that angle. Look at that. See, see how I have the shadow over here. Look at it's. It's to see the smile on their face, on, on a student's face who may not have a thing in, in, in high school. You know, maybe I have a lot of students who are not the jocks, are not the, you know, may not have found his or her way in high school. And, and this is this is their way. They have they they like they enjoy art and they need to draw and but it's a different form of art when they can take a camera and do this and they can look at the shadow here. See how I did this light over here. Hey coach, look at this. Look, you know, in, what if I shoot this way and we need to move their microphone up a little bit. Coach, it sounds, oh man, that that's, that's just, that's the cool thing to me. And much like Mr. Brown said, if to see the light, you know, like, like you mentioned, you know, to see the light go off and see them and then hear, Hey, this is, uh, you know, you can make a career out of this. You can make it, you can do this. You can absolutely, you know, with all due respect to all English, math, science teachers, absolutely the, the vital importance. You are doing right now what you can do for a career when you leave this class. Thank you so much. So one question that I do have is, do you all anticipate students, and this is for everyone, do you anticipate students starting to gain more interest and pursuing academic and or industry certi um, certifications or continuing to enroll in two or four year institutions. And this is for anyone who wants to jump in. I can take that one for just a moment. Um, uh, and this may be unorthodox. <clears throat> I, fought, I fought with a lot of counselors over this over the last 20 years. Um, it, it's, it's really tough to ask a 17 year old to tell you what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Um, and even a 20 year old for that matter. Um, and that's why you see a lot of times in, in post-secondary education, you, you see four year degrees take six to eight years because we're trying to figure out where we are and what we're doing. I have, I have encouraged many of my students, uh, let me put you in a job. Let me put you in a job, work that job two, three, four years. And if you want to go to college, that's wonderful. 
on about that most of the time your job will pay for it if you're a good employee. So, but if you don't like high school, it's insane to go to college. Uh, and, and, and that's what I'm seeing more and more, uh, uh, especially in the economic environment we're in right now. See, when I was trying to get a job out of high school, there were, there were 10 people to one job. Now it's just the opposite. There's 10 jobs to one kid. And, and I can almost put a kid to work right away. And with, and now they're looking at them and say, we don't care if you don't have any experience. I've had, I've had uh, supervisors and, 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 and service managers tell me, I can't teach them work ethic and character, but I can teach them everything else. If they can bring me work ethic and character, I, I, I don't care what else they know. I can teach everything else. Sylvia or Pat, was there anything that you all wanted to add to that? Yes, I um I definitely agree with what Mr. Phillips said. Um, with a lot of students in today's generation, it's it's the the idea of immediacy when it comes to like wanting to work, wanting to earn money. And a lot of them don't want to go to school for another four years <laughs> just to do that. You know, they're ready to, to get into the workforce. But the great thing is nowadays so many jobs are, you know trades based or skills based where you can earn a certificate in six months or less you know in construction welding even in finance even in computer science and you all earn more than shoes than what i'm earning <laughs> to be honest with you you know and it won't take it won't take long to complete and um that's what i try to do when i visit the, the high school students is to let them know if you know going to college for another four years is not for you that's okay but let's explore some other short-term programs some certified vacation programs, um, even some programs that may take maybe a year or two to complete. And we can help you find out what careers you can pursue under those programs and earn really good money, you know, and not have to worry about student loans or, you know, things like that. You know, if you if if you know college isn't for you, that's okay. But that doesn't mean that you can't earn a, a successful living, you know, in other ways. And uh, if I may jump into Ms. Butler, I, I think both just piggybacking on, on what Sylvia and Mr. Brown both said, that, that's I see that all the time. And I tell my students that uh, I graduated high school in 1997. And when I graduated high school, only the quote unquote, the dumb kids didn't go to college because that's just what you did. Everybody went to college. But now some of those dumb kids, quote unquote, have a trade, a skill, and are making six figures a year and will for every year the rest of their lives. And a lot of friends of mine w went to school and got a four-year degree uh, because that's just what you did. And now they're in gosh knows how much debt and they're working uh, the night desk at the airport hotel with, yeah, I mean, with a four-year degree when there's many, many avenues out there where you can go straight to work. You can go to Jeff State and get a, a you know, pursue a certificate, a two-year, two-year plan. It's just, there's been such a paradigm shift and uh, I'm biased because obviously because it's what I do, but man, oh man, you just do not want, there's no reason to go have just a four-year degree in XYZ subject just to have a four-year degree anymore. I graduated a couple of years ago from high school and, um, and, and uh, I was a straight A student and I'm bragging just, you know, just stating the fact. Um, and everybody told me that, you know, smart kids, they go to college. And so that's what I did. I, I went off to college and got a four year degree. And, and um, within, within four years, I was in trade school, uh, studying to be a diesel mechanic and did that as a career for, you know, for, for several years before becoming an instructor. So, um, you know, I, I sometimes could kick myself for not doing that first, but you know, I, I've got to say that the college education did a, did a lot for me. I was the first one in my family to get a college education, and, and so I, that you know that was that was quite a, a touching thing. But the fact of it is, is that uh, th there are so many opportunities out there that you could that you don't have to have a four year degree with, um, and in fact, it actually will impede your progress because that delays you four years. In which, if you want a college education, I encourage you. You know, I would encourage every kid to get one. But do that as you work. And we were, were engaged with some uh, of the community colleges that actually teach our programs, but they, they shift back and forth. They will, have the, they will have the student 
in the classroom for so many weeks and then actually in a car dealership working for so many weeks and then back to the classroom and the school and all of that is credit but at the same time it's work experience and they're earning money while they're going to school. Alabama Possible one of the things that we do is um, when we speak of post-secondary education we do also include any forms of training certificates and trade opportunities. So what you all are speaking of now, we do definitely want to share with you, and this is for all of our educators that are online, is that all of the avenues that you all are sharing, we consider to be post-secondary education. So everything is valued. Um, and just wanting to share that that's part of the reason why we're having this webinar today. So, Pat, how can our high school educators, especially our school counselors, expose to students to new career pathways? What are, what's your suggestion? I believe, and again, I am very biased because it's what I do, but career tech is the way to go. Uh, I think if from a career tech instructor who spent 17, 18 years in sales, I believe that it starts here and I'll go back to my work to, to my, my soft skills, employability skills. If you don't have, and I think uh, Mr. Brown was you to mention character. If you don't have character, if you don't have work ethic, if you don't know how to communicate, carry on a conversation because it's not right here on one of these and looking, you're looking at your phone. Uh, if you can't do that, you can't do anything. You can't, you, you, you're not going to sit in a classroom and be able to listen to, you know, have your earpods in for the rest of your lives. And I think that goes to translates to English, to so to history, to science, to everything across the board. But it starts with us career tech instructors because we have an opportunity, which I thoroughly enjoy, to teach life. We can teach life skills. My gosh, don't show up with pajama pants on. Don't wear, you know. I mean, Mr. Brown, I see you laughing, Sylvia. I mean, it, it, we laugh because, but it's true. You know, don't, uh, um, don't have pajama pants on. Have, we have professional Wednesday, you know, every day, every Wednesday here. We, uh, what we do kind of trickles down, if you will, to use a, an economic term from many years ago now. But, you know, we, what we do is kind of, it trickles down too. When we have professional Wednesdays, we see across the board, discipline problems are down. Um, it's all a thought. It's an idea. It's a it's a it's a way to present yourself and counselors uh, along with in conjunction in symphony with us, all instructors, not just career tech instructors. If we can start pushing the small things, the small things show up on time, show up with a smile on your face, say hello when you pass someone in the hall, hold the door open for somebody. If you see a piece of trash, my gosh, pick it up. Just small things. Then from there you will find yourself doing better on a science test, on a history test, in automotive, in TV production, in cosmetology, uh, in, in pre-cal, in whatever it is. It's all a mindset. It's a way you carry yourself. And I believe we as career tech instructors, it just it starts with us because we can teach that. And I believe if counselors can uh, can piggyback on just what I'm calling the small things, but it's not small, you know, the, 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 the little things of just – just be a good person. Just do the small things. It's cool to be nice. It's cool to say hello. It's cool to have, to be smart, make good grades. My gosh, that's cool. You're going to be successful. That's something to be proud of. And I just believe it starts with us because we can teach life skills. Thank you so much. Um, and, you know, I, I think the majority of us, if not all, would completely agree with what you just said and what being that I've never worked in a high school, what really um, brings it all together for me is to hear how what you all are doing, and I say you all to include all of you, is that there seems to be partnership and a sense of collaboration, not only in your responsibilities with the students, but also working with your colleagues across campus. And I think that that's something that, especially with students, when they see that, then they also will in incorporate the word collaboration into their vocabulary. Um, so Sylvia, the next question is for you. 
what resources would you recommend to um, high school educators to support career exploration and preparation prior to post-secondary experience? Me. Utilize me. <laughs> The, the the great the one thing I love about working in this position is that I get to speak to so many different teachers and counselors and students and really collaborate with them to help them learn more about Just State specifically because I work for Just State. And I feel like when I have the chance to come out and speak to the students, it gives them a, another a picture of what they can expect once they graduate. A lot of students, even in my generation, you know, when I was in high school, the the general idea for college was you can go to college to be a teacher or a doctor or a nurse or things like that. And when I get to go to the schools and talk about our career and professional programs, I'm telling them you can either be a nurse or you can be a um, physical therapy assistant or you can uh, do welding or you can come and get your CDL license, you know, and do the 10 week program and and do that. So utilizing your your career coaches in the community colleges usually utilizing your career, uh, your recruiters um your admissions representatives anyone you know that's close any high school teachers or um instructors or counselors any colleges that are near you where you can reach out to those coaches or admissions representatives or recruiters have them to come out to your classes and speak um that way they can the students can have a, a you know more ideas to think about when it comes to what they want to do as they approach graduation. Um, another resource that you can also utilize is utilizing your nonprofits within your community who specialize in education and mentoring. Um, so that way you can kind of have another resource to help you out when it comes to helping students figure out what they want to do and helping them build those soft skills as well as those career skills that they need. Um, I had a conversation with one teacher a while ago and she mentioned that the the biggest thing about degrees outside of you know the money part is that it shows employees that you can be teachable and that's important for certificate programs too you know when you earn these certificates it not only shows you shows you that you have the skills but it also shows you that you're teachable and that whatever you feel like you need help with we can help you learn that because you've shown us that you're willing to learn it so if you just utilize the resources within your community, um, that that can go along, help you out and go a long way for you. Excellent. Thank you. So what's funny is you actually answered part of my last question. <laughs> um, but I do also, I know that um, Phil had mentioned working with external partners and um going on the different field trips, but I also want to open it up to you, Pat, um, as far as external organizations or partnerships, is there anything that you have or words of wisdom that you can share with um, our colleagues on, that are participating on this Zoom? Oh, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I am very, very fortunate. Uh, again, I'm at Hueytown High School. Hueytown is a wonderful blue collar working class community. And uh, my, I'm very fortunate to partner with the Chamber of Commerce here. Uh, Debbie Kiker, the Chamber of Commerce uh, president in Hueytown. I have students all the time filming, taking pictures, being a part of this. We uh, There is a Chamber Chat podcast, weekly podcast, in which my students produce. Uh, anytime there is any kind of event in town, my students are there to cover it via whether it's video, still pictures. Uh, I'm... I guess honored to be a uh, judge of the Christmas parade. You know, anything like that is the community involvement. If you can get involved in the community where my students can see what they've done, maybe on Facebook, on Instagram, where, hey, the tree, you know, it's their picture up on the tree lighting, uh, you know, ceremony page on the Hueytown Chamber Facebook. If it's their video, if it's an interview they did, Oh my, that's invaluable for these, for these students, for these kids. It's because they are kids. I mean, look, what you are doing is being published. This is, we're in a day, of, uh, you know, in the age of being published is putting, being put on Facebook, put on Instagram, put on TikTok, whatever, without doing some goofy dance. You can actually, you know, you utilize that to, <laughs> for good and to, because you know as much as i hate these things that you can you can do your own thing in tv production if you have one of these and a little bit of a knowledge and want to 
you can start your own business. You can do anything you want, but it all starts with being responsible, do a community involved, being involved in the community. If I have students, I'll have you know a deputy contact me. Do you have students who want to be at X Y Z event this week? I'll throw it out to some of my advanced students, and it's usually three or four re replies, and I have to go with the first one to reply. Or you did it last time, let me let it. I mean, they're so they so want to be involved and want nothing more than just to do it and see their work published. And that's just in a small ish kind of town, small community that that's invaluable. All right. Well, thank you very much. Those were the questions that I had for you all. Um, any last comments before we move on that anyone had? Um, for anyone who is on the Zoom meeting, if you um, are interested in um, having your students take a career assessment to maybe learn about, if they haven't already taken one, um, I'll be more than happy to add the link to our career assessment for Just State to the chat. Um, if possible, and you can give it to your students um, if they want to take it just to see what kind of careers they may match with uh, for the future. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's a great resource um, because you're right. It, it's definitely something that our students would be able to gain maybe a little bit more insight into what they are interested in. So just to double check, um, I didn't see any, but May, do you happen to see any questions in the chat? No questions, but we did have a request to add that career assessment. So if you would do so, that would be much appreciated. We can also, if we're able, include that in our follow-up email as well, if you're fine with that. Perfect. Okay. At this time, we're going to ask a few poll questions that'll give us some feedback on today's presentation. And we encourage everyone to participate, but especially our high school educators, um, so that we can receive your responses and also to make sure that you receive your professional development credit. Um, so May, if you would assist us with that poll. Yes, we already have the first set launched. And just so you know, we have another set of questions coming after this first one. So please hang on till the end and we'll make sure to get you out on time. All right, I'm gonna close out this poll now and then I will launch our second set. Perfect, we've had almost everyone respond to this. So I'll give it about 10 more seconds before I close out but you'll see on the slide on the screen, this is the professional development credit information that you'll use when you register in PowerSchool. All right, I'm going to close out of this poll now and turn it back over to you, Reba. All right, thank you so much. Um, we do have a few last comments. Um, as far as save the dates, we um, have a few items that are coming up. Of course, as we shared earlier, next week, the 13th through the 19th, is the ninth annual National Apprenticeship Week. Um, and so we want to make certain that we share that information with you. We also have our um, Cash for College Scholarship 101 that will be coming up soon in, on the 29th of November. And then in January, and this will definitely be revisited because we know it's so far out, but we do have our College Admissions 101 um, Part 2, which is with the out-of-state um, colleges and universities. So we did want to share that information with you, but continue to watch our newsletters and we will definitely keep that information posted. Um, as far as our different resource sites. What we wanted to do is in addition to all the valuable information that we had this morning, we have different sites and links that you'll that are live. So when you get the presentation, you'll be able to click right on them. Um, and all of this information will definitely pertain to the state of Alabama and the resources that you can share with your students. So please feel free to do so. Um, this information can be widely shared and, and we really encourage you to do that. Um, as far as our resource and help desk, we want to remind you that we are available um, during 
weekdays uh, during the business hours. And the help desk is for not only our educators, our community leaders, our students, and our families. So please make certain that you can share this information. Um, and we always are ready and willing to assist you all with any questions that you have. And lastly, we ask that you continue to stay connected to us. So you can find, out, find us on alabamagoestocollege.org, or you can email us at algoestocollege at alabamapossible.org, and or you can give us a call at 334-316-6155. Again, during the weekdays, during the business hours, and we also can receive text messages at the same number. So thank you again for joining us today. We wanna to thank our panelists for taking time out of their morning to engage and share all this valuable information. Thank you so much for participating. Um, we look forward to seeing you all again on the 29th and to our pa panelists, Thank you for all of your wonderful insight. That was very, very helpful.